In this podcast episode, Dr. Richard Johnson discusses the impact of fructose on obesity and metabolic syndrome in a podcast. He explains that the traditional belief that obesity is solely caused by consuming too many calories and not exercising enough may be oversimplified. Johnson's research suggests that fructose, specifically high fructose corn syrup, plays a significant role in driving obesity and metabolic syndrome. Dr. Johnson conducted studies on laboratory animals fed high sugar diets and found that while weight gain was similar between sugar-fed and starch-fed groups when calorie intake was controlled, the sugar-fed animals exhibited metabolic syndrome markers such as diabetes, insulin resistance, fatty liver, and high blood pressure. Fructose caused animals to become hungry and resistant to the hormone leptin, which signals fullness. This led to increased food intake, especially when high-fat diets were introduced. While natural fruits are generally healthy due to their fiber, vitamins, and minerals, fruit juices and dried fruits can be high in fructose and sugar. Drinking fruit juice can lead to obesity, especially in children, as it provides a concentrated source of fructose. Dr. Johnson recommends limiting fruit juice consumption and opting for whole fruits instead for their fiber and phytonutrient benefits. He highlights specific fruits like kiwi, berries, and oranges as healthier options with lower fructose content. Figs are noted for their high fructose concentration, making them a fruit to consume in moderation. Dr. Johnson's research delves into the body's ability to synthesize fructose from glucose. When glucose levels rise, the body can convert glucose into fructose, leading to metabolic syndrome. Giving animals glucose in their drinking water resulted in weight gain and metabolic syndrome, similar to fructose consumption. This suggests that high glucose levels can trigger fructose synthesis in the liver, contributing to obesity. When glucose is consumed, it can be converted to fructose in the body, leading to insulin resistance. This insulin resistance hinders the body's ability to metabolize glucose effectively, resulting in fat accumulation and other metabolic issues. Dr. Johnson's research showed that blocking the metabolism of fructose in animals prevented the development of insulin resistance, fatty liver, and obesity, highlighting the role of fructose in metabolic syndrome. Dr. Johnson's studies extended to feeding animals soft drinks containing high fructose corn syrup, a common source of both glucose and fructose. Animals that could not metabolize fructose did not develop metabolic syndrome when consuming these drinks, further emphasizing the role of fructose in driving metabolic dysfunction. He recommends monitoring glucose levels and avoiding excessive fructose consumption to prevent metabolic issues. The findings challenge the traditional view that obesity is solely a result of excessive calorie intake and lack of exercise. High fructose consumption, whether from added sugars or natural sources like fruit juice, can drive obesity and metabolic syndrome. Limiting fructose intake, especially from processed foods and sugary beverages, may help prevent weight gain and associated health issues. Dr. Johnson emphasizes the importance of exercise in maintaining mitochondrial health and preventing metabolic syndrome. He discusses the benefits of both strength training and zone 2 exercise in stimulating mitochondrial growth and repair. Additionally, he highlights the role of vitamin C as an antioxidant that can counter the oxidative stress induced by uric acid and fructose, promoting mitochondrial health. The discussion shifts to the impact of salt on metabolic health, with Dr. Johnson noting that excessive salt consumption can lead to elevated serum sodium levels and trigger the production of fructose. He recommends balancing salt intake with adequate water consumption to prevent the negative effects of high salt concentrations in the blood. Drinking water before meals and staying hydrated throughout the day can help maintain this balance and support metabolic health. Dr. Johnson delves into the evolutionary aspect of fructose consumption discussing how our ancestors may have utilized fruits like figs to store fat and survive periods of scarcity. He collaborated with paleontologist Peter Andrews to explore the role of figs in human evolution and the development of metabolic adaptations to cope with changing environmental conditions. This historical perspective sheds light on the potential benefits and risks of consuming fructose-rich foods in modern diets. Johnson highlights that fructose is a key player in the pathway 
that leads to elevated uric acid levels. He explains that when fructose is metabolized in the body, it can increase uric acid production, which in turn can trigger oxidative stress and lower ATP levels in cells. This process can lead to conditions like fatty liver and metabolic syndrome. While saturated fat can also contribute to fatty liver, Johnson notes that its impact is milder compared to the combination of fructose and saturated fat. Studies have shown that saturated fat can cause a low-grade fatty liver, but when combined with sugar, the effects are more severe. Johnson's research with butter fat and sugar in animal models demonstrated the synergistic effect of fructose and saturated fat on fatty liver development. Johnson discusses the role of seed oils, which are polyunsaturated fats, in driving obesity. While some studies suggest that seed oils may contribute to metabolic syndrome, he believes that the rise in seed oil consumption correlates with the increase in sugar consumption. Johnson introduces the concept of umami foods, which can also contribute to obesity by raising uric acid levels. He explains that foods rich in purines, such as shellfish and certain meats, can stimulate uric acid production and activate the survival switch that leads to weight gain. Beer, in particular, is highlighted as a significant contributor to obesity due to its brewer's yeast content, which raises uric acid levels and triggers the metabolic pathways associated with weight gain. Dr. Johnson explains that both sugar and alcohol can activate a switch in the body that leads to weight gain and other health issues. Sugar works rapidly, while alcohol works over a longer period. Both substances can lead to the activation of the switch, contributing to obesity and other metabolic problems. He recommends limiting alcohol consumption and opting for wine over hard liquor or beer if one chooses to drink. Red meat, particularly beef, can raise uric acid levels in the body, which may contribute to health issues such as diabetes. While there is some controversy surrounding the health effects of red meat, Dr. Johnson suggests opting for fish and poultry as healthier protein sources. He also mentions the environmental impact of red meat consumption, highlighting the importance of considering sustainability in dietary choices. Collaborating with neurologists, Dr. Johnson proposes a hypothesis on the role of fructose in Alzheimer's disease. He highlights the increase in Alzheimer's cases over the past century and suggests that environmental factors, rather than genetics alone, may be driving this trend. The hypothesis focuses on the accumulation of amyloid plaques and tau protein in the brain, characteristic of Alzheimer's, and suggests that fructose production triggered by dietary factors could play a significant role in the development of the disease. Dr. Johnson's research suggests a potential link between insulin resistance, mitochondrial dysfunction, and inflammation in the brain, leading to the development of Alzheimer's disease. By understanding the role of uric acid and fructose in metabolic disorders, there may be opportunities to prevent or reverse early Alzheimer's through targeted interventions.